Now, in case you don't know, GUI stands for graphical user interface, which are just fancy words that mean like 2D stuff on a screen. So things like text on a screen, buttons on the screen, frames on the screen, etc. Now the thing about Roblox is that its GUI is actually insanely simple. I mean, all you have to do is just add a container for it and then you can just add whatever you want. You can add a text label, you know, you can add a button, but when it comes down to it, Roblox GUI is insanely simple compared to other game engines. And this makes the following GUI trick even more impressive, tracking eyes. This trick involves using something called a billboard GUI. Do you know those like optical illusions where there's like some real life object and then like as you walk around the object, it almost looks like its eyes are like tracking you. This is effectively what this GUI trick aims to do. So the very first thing we do is we need to create a part and then we need to put a billboard GUI into it. Now, in case you aren't that familiar with Roblox GUI, which you would have been if you uh, <clears throat> checked out my link tree, <clears throat> the billboard GUI effectively allows any GUI item inside of it to float inside of a part. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm going to add a frame. And if I take this part and I, you know, lift it up a little bit, this is effectively how it looks. Now, obviously there are some issues. The main ones being that the part isn't in the middle of the frame. And the other issue is that when I actually zoom out, the frame gets bigger. But because we're going for like, you know, realistic looking eyes on a model, I don't want it to do that. Now to fix this, we will need to resize our billboard GUI, but the first thing I'll do actually is I'll resize the frame. So I'll say one comma one, and there we go. See, so it actually resizes the frame to have the part in the middle. So literally all we need to do is just make both offset zero and then make scales like, I don't know, 10 or something, right? And there we go. Yeah, so now when I zoom out, it actually remains consistent. And there's like a weird, pfft, what, what even is that? Now we probably do want to make this look more like an eye. So what I'm gonna do is I'll copy this frame and then I'll paste it inside of itself, okay? And I'll set the frame's background color to be black. Now I don't want its size to be one one, I want it to be half that. So I'm gonna set it to 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5, like so. And then to make this pupil centered, I'm gonna go to position and I'll do 0 0.25, comma 0.25. And the finishing touch here is just to set the part's transparency to be equal to one. And there we go. So we have just successfully created an eye that follows you around. And these eyes, when added to a character, will give the illusion that the character is actually following you around, like so. So, you know, if I kind of move my camera like here, look, look, look at that. Oh yeah, he's still looking at me. And then if I go a little higher, there we go. He's looking at me here. He's staring at me, bro. While this trick is very cool, it does look a bit mundane. So let's actually make the next trick a bit more visually appealing. The next GUI trick is one I came up with myself, actually, and it's called the Gradient Brick. The goal of this trick is that if you have a part that you really want to stand out or, you know, just like look flashy in general, then this is the way to do it. And for this trick, we're going to need to learn about two things. The first thing being a surface GUI and the second thing being a UI gradient. Now, surface GUI is actually very simple. If I were to add a frame instead of a surface GUI, and then I were to make that frame, again, one comma one, like so, then as you can see, on this side of the part, the frame is visible. And that is basically all that a surface GUI does, right? I mean, you, you give it like the face, so front, I could do top if I wanted to, and then it would be on top. And then this face just shows whatever GUI you add inside of the surface GUI. And so what I can do right now, is inside of this frame, I can add a UI gradient. And then I can click on this gradient, I can click on color, and I can click on these three dots, which will pull up the gradient menu. And from here, all I need to do is just click on this arrow and then select the color, and then click on this arrow and select another color. So for this example, I will use the same color scheme as I did in the video where I was actually like creating this brick for the first time, which results in this very like hot pink bright color. All we need to do from here is just copy the surface GUI five more times and then apply it onto every surface of the part. Then what we do is we just select all of the surface GUIs and we check always on top. And here comes the last finishing touch, which is just setting the part's material to be neon. And yeah, look at that. Now, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the white outline, but we can change that, right? So we can go to the part and we can set its color to be something different, like something like this, right? And there we go, yeah. Look at how cool that looks, wow. And yeah, so this just effectively gives you a part which looks amazing, and as an added bonus can actually be seen through walls, like so. Now I know that this trick relies on being like very flashy and over the top to be cool, but don't worry because the next trick will be a lot more subtle while still being just as cool. So now we're going to be making this semi-transparent part. 
And the cool bit about this trick is that it actually works very similarly to this gradient brick. So what I'll do is I'm just going to delete this part, okay? I'm going to quickly create a new one, and then just like last time, I'll fill it up with surface GUIs. And so now we're left with a part that's surrounded by white frames. But because the goal is to make this part go from fully visible to fully invisible, then what we're going to need to use is another UI gradient. So let's use the top side, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the frame and I'm going to add a UI gradient. Very simple. And what I'll do is I'll copy the part's color and I'll paste it inside of the gradient's color. Now you might be surprised to hear that I'm not actually going to give it a gradient color. The reason we're using a UI gradient here is to use gradient transparency. By clicking on these three buttons, we get this like very big and scary menu pop-up, but don't worry, I'll guide you through it. In short, clicking anywhere on this grid will create a point. And what this basically means is that the higher the point, the higher the transparency, which I'm just now realizing that we cannot see because the part itself isn't transparent. But if we quickly just make the part transparent, there we go. And so now all we have to do is just drag this point all the way until the end. And because it's not facing in the correct direction, I will actually rotate it a bit. Yeah, so like a negative 90. And so that's the first side completed. And now all we have to do is just paste the gradient onto all of the other frames and then make sure that it's rotating the correct way. And so this results in this very interesting looking part. Yeah, look at how cool this looks. Just these like ghostly parts almost. And they still have collision too, which is so cool. This would just be like amazing for like decoration. I forgot what they're called, but you know those like um balloons with like candles inside of them? You can actually use this trick to make something similar to that. Now all of the tricks we've done so far have been very hands-on, but this next trick is not only going to be easier to do, but also easier to understand. And I'm not doing this because I ran out of ideas. I'm doing this because the trick after the next one is the most intense we've seen yet. But you know, haha, with that being said, now I call this trick very easy because we've actually done exactly this before. So you make a part and then you know you cover it with a bunch of surface GUIs and you do something which we actually did in the gradient trick which is you select all of the surface GUIs and make them always on top. Now look you're a smart person you've probably figured it out right in case you're not smart in case you're you know very very stupid what always on top does is it makes the GUI always on top meaning that it cannot be obstructed by anything that it's basically a wall hack. Right, so if I make a part and then I just make a wall like this, we can still see the part behind. So if you ever need to make some wall hack effect, you could use this. Although I guess instead of doing all of this, you know, you could just like add a highlight to your part and achieve the same effect. But like, you know, who cares, bro? Highlights are cringe or something. I don't know. And now it's time for not the last, but the most extreme trick. It's so extreme, in fact, that my laptop could not only not run it, it also almost crashed. The pixelation effect. This technique effectively uses a bunch of tiny little frames to showcase what the player's camera would be looking at. By using a bunch of little frames, the game is able to basically expand the size of pixels, giving the game a lot of this like old style retro theme. And if you want to try out their pixel effect, then I recommend checking out this game. The last trick is just a different way of using Roblox GUI, and I call it the gameplay GUI. There's a game on Roblox called Generator Incremental, which is really good, you should go check it out right now. And it does this insanely perfectly by having a bunch of generators that use buttons. Now obviously this isn't everything. Like okay fine they use buttons so what? Well there's one generator in specific which I want to bring attention to. What this generator does is it just spawns around a bunch of these tiny little frames that are meant to represent different fruit. And what you do is you just hover around the field with your mouse to collect the fruit. Now you know because I'm a very amazing pro gamer I can click on the field and collect all of them at once. But this is an amazing amazing example of this technique. Like this is the only game that I've seen that actually incorporates the use of GUI as like an actual playable gameplay mechanic. And as you can see here, this just adds a lot more depth to your game. I still find it so baffling how you can just go from a simple button to like a whole amazing contraption. Whenever you're free, I do want to give you the challenge of trying to create your own cool trick using GUI. And then once you're done, you can join my Discord server in the description and share what you've made. Now look, because you're still here and you're still watching and it's nearing the end of the video, which you know, I'll give you some time to check the red playback bar on the bottom.
You're done? Awesome, there we go. You're clearly passionate about Roblox development, or at the very least, you're just very interested about how all of this stuff works. But the second point is that you also like my teaching style. So I actually will let you in on a little secret. I have released a six and a half hour class featuring literally my best information and knowledge. And the issue of putting this up onto YouTube is that advanced information, just it just hurts viewer attention, you know, because everyone is like on shorts these days and everything, so people can't watch like unedited, unfiltered, raw, amazing advice. But if you're someone who actually wants to see that, then scroll down right now and click on the link in the pinned comment. And as always, we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.